Uh, all right. Um, question two. Um, I know you're a a Raider or a Charger fan, but this one's for you, God. Jamar. Oh my God! You almost called me. <laughs> 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 Our friendship was about to be Bro, over. Well, if you're a Raider fan, can we go to Vegas every weekend for games? I'll be a Raider fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need an excuse to go to Vegas. All right. Um, this one was also from Xavier. So, Derek Carr capable of winning, playing winning football with the Raiders? Say. Un- unbiased opinion. Unbiased opinion. Unbiased opinion. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to think back at Derek Carr and kind of see if, has Derek Carr ever had real competition for for his spot at the QB's position? I mean, mm, not really. Uh, not really, right? So not real that. competition. Right. So I'm thinking, you know, is he capable of winning with the Raiders? I think so. I think if they can put the right pieces around him, he's possible. Possible he can, he can, he's capable of winning with the Raiders. I think that having another quarterback that can really easily take your position, um, hopefully put some put some fire under him, um, and he starts playing the way uh, an NFL quarterback should be playing. So I'm excited to see that QB battle um, and see how that plays itself out. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think. Uh, his, his biggest issue is number one has been health. Um, number two has been, you know, the players around him because when he was at his peak, he had, you know, Amari Cooper playing at a high level, Michael Crabtree playing at a high level, O-Line was playing at a high level. Um, and then the, the third one was, was like Jamar kind of insinuated. He never really had anybody, you know, sitting behind him. Um, you know, kind of pushing him. So he, he, he kind of became like a check down Charlie a little bit and didn't really want to take too many chances. Now, if he's playing that same brand of football in, in 2020, um, there, there's somebody there who I, I don't think Mariota is a guy who's going to take a lot of chances. Um, but, you know, you do have somebody there that if you aren't playing up to par that you might be looking over your shoulder. So maybe he does take some more chances, try to make a, a few more plays than he otherwise would have. Um, and maybe we see a different a different side of him this season. I think my take on it is more of a question, a follow-up question to all of it is, do you think Derek Carr can, do you think John Gruden wants Derek Carr to win? Like, that's kind of where my standpoint is, is like, do, does, does John Gruden believe in Derek Carr? You know, there is, there's all the, the talk and speculation, how he wanted him out, how he wanted Brady. Like, yeah, I mean, Brady is a, a better quarterback and you're trying to win. And, you know, Marcus Mariota is, a, I don't know, decent quarterback and he's on the free market. So you might as well bring him in. He's a former starter. Like, it's a great backup situation versus uh, Mike Glennon or whatever whoever was the backup last year like it's it's a better option for sure um it's so yeah i mean my kind of take is is does john gruden want Derek carr to win obviously john gruden himself wants to win it's just a question of if he if he even wants Derek carr to be that guy right yeah it's something that i we've talked about before and i, I guess i bashed the gruden brothers um <laughs> uh, you know gruden made a lot of headway being the monday night football guy the quarterback camp guy, mm-hmm. and uh, you look back at his history as a quarterback coach, a quarterback head coach for quarterback, it has not been great. Right. Um, Derek Carr, you know, I, I just pulled up some stats for him, a losing record in his career. Um, but you look at, at his early traje- trajectory, he he went, you know, he, they were bad 3-13, and 7-9, and nine, and then he was 12-3 and three as a starter. His third season. And you, you kind of, I go, well, okay, I didn't really realize that. That was with Del Rio, right? It was with mm-hmm. Del Rio. So, was it, like, they, they had a good running game, right? Their defense was all right. He had some pieces, but he was not asked to do everything. Right. And so, I think if they gave him some help, he could be the guy. But, like you said, does Gruden want him to be the guy? Or are they trying to move on to the next guy? And push it down the road and see if they can find someone who they think they can be really good. 
And, and even looking at his stats last year, 4,000 yards passing, they, they went 7-9, and nine, 21 touchdowns, 8 picks. As a career, he's, he's a 2-1 to one guy. Um, I mean, he's, uh, he's actually better than 2-1. to one. I, I think he can win. He seems more comfortable a couple years in now. I would really like to see them, the Raiders, give him a, another shot. Uh, you know, you're always going to have Mari- Mariota kind of waiting in the wings to take that over. But if you don't actually give him the shot, like if the decision's already made, then we can't actually evaluate any of that. Mm-hmm. Like if he comes out and he's, he's asked for, for 12 weeks, six weeks, whatever it's going to be, you know, flip it and play Mariota, draft a guy, whatever. So I think I think we all are in agreement that he can be successful if he has the right things around him. Real quick, let's go around. What does he have to have around him? What does he need? What does he need to be successful? So like for me, they have what is it number twelve? Um, I think they need C D Lamb. I think they need a guy because as much as I think Jerry Judy's a great route runner, a great player, they need CD Lamb as a guy who can win 50-50 balls, who can win down the field, who can win on all three levels, make catches, run after the catch. You have Hunter Renfro who can win in the slot, you know, Tyra Williams to go, you know, vertical as, as your traditional X and then Darren Waller and all the other tight ends and you know, the walking corpse of Jason Witten. <laughs> um and then the strong running game. So right. I mean, I absolutely agree. CeeDee Lamb's got to be the guy. Yeah. Right. Unless they figure out a way to, you know, get Bill O'Brien to give them (laughs) new Hopkins. But so you go and you get CeeDee Lamb. Like you said, they have a lot of tight end slot guys, Mm -hmm. which, you know, that's fine. But you need a guy who could be the guy. Right. Right. And and he would fill in and be the number one right away. Mm -hmm. Right. He would probably struggle a little bit in the league. But he's he's a premier athlete and a Extremely talented receiver, arguably number one in the, in the draft mm-hmm. at receiver, one or two, unless you're Chris Sims, right? So you go and you pick him, and then they continue to run the ball well, which with Josh Jacobs, they did a really good job. Sometimes they didn't commit as, as much as they should have, but if they continue to do that, I think that's how he becomes successful. Yeah, I mean, I think... A wide receiver is something that they they need they made a lot of you know their their first number four all four overall last year was defensive end then they got josh jacobs then at 27 they got jonathan Safety. abram then their second round pick they got another cornerback like they've made some big young moves on the young defensive players and i think they just need some more help in the the offensive side uh to to help them out yeah exactly well, and, and think about it, too. The way Josh Jacobs ran, like, I mean, it's, ask the two football experts, but that offensive line doesn't didn't seem awful, uh, oh, no. you know? So it doesn't it doesn't seem like to they need a piece to fill in there to give him more comfort in the pocket or anything. It, it He just needs someone to throw to. Right. 